January 6th. Year 201 M 2020 BC. Volcaldera Bluffs. Weather conditions? Cold as balls. It's my first time living close to water. The idea of marine layer is new to me, but I do understand morning mist. This was like it, except infinitely more shitty. The heavy fog makes navigating to my new school more difficult, as I fail to see anything five feet in front of me. Like a runt of a tree planted in the sidewalk that I swerved to avoid. It's my first time having to walk to school too. My new apartment is in an awkward spot, opposite side of town, yet no school or public bus to take me from there. It's my first day at a new school. It's the second half of the first semester of senior year. I had six months left in my old school. I can't even imagine the kind of hell those six months would have been. But this... I should take my mind off of it. I whip out my phone and consider the best way to make people upset online. I decide to bait the obvious underage poster. The thread goes 404, right as I'm ready to post my well thought out reply. Better hide my phone before someone sees fit to take it from me. The only human around town, I think. It's the sounds that reach me first, the chatter of people milling about. Bro! It's been too long! It was only three weeks. <laughs> I can make out the building now. The fog shrouding gives the school an ominous vibe to it. I look at the name written on the arch over the entrance. Volcano High. Perfect setting for a horror game. Or maybe a shitty wad. The attempt at humoring myself just made me feel more alone. A check of my phone says I'm 30 minutes early. Wonderful. I move to the entrance, only to see all of the steps occupied by students. Their eyes turn to me, expressions of confusion and contemplation. I can feel their judging stares, the same that had haunted me for four months previous. I can already picture what they're thinking. Dude, check it out. Is that a skinny? Where's his spear? Aren't they all like spear chuckers or something? Bet he eats his own kind. They probably see me as some kind of circus attraction. And nothing more. Huh. I'm the freak show among this cereal box mascot crowd. Taking acid is not nearly as colorful as going to Volcano High. I should write that down. As I write, write that down on my phone's note app. I notice the surrounding students stop looking at me, which is good. I can peep around the friend circles without a problem now. Not like I'll ever be a part of it. Hmm. Talk about wanting to stand out. I never thought it was possible to look like you were from a black and white 20s cartoon. She does differ from the other Technicolor students, though. 
in the worst way possible. Oh, oh yeah, she's staring at me. With that look. Fucking hell. Has she never seen a human in her life? I fucking hate that look. Contempt. Judging. Everyone that has looked at me like that never proved to be anything more than an asshole. Like on the anomaly here, she's just as dumb and insufferable as the rest of them. She's probably no better than me. Miss, my snout is so big I can land a plane on it. Go back to your friends. Huh. She did. I feel like I should say something? I noticed that all this time my knees were weak and my arms were heavy. My feet carry me over the soggy grass as I look for somewhere else to be. On the side of the building is where I find sanctuary. It's a small alcove of sorts. The pavement is cracked to bits and the shrubs surrounding it are overgrown. Even the bench, cracked paint on rotted wood held between two concrete legs, match the abandoned vibe of the place. It was perfect. I flop down on the wet bench, and the violent crack from it makes my heart drop. Almost perfect, but good enough. I feel a tightness in my chest, and my lungs fight to draw air in. Head in my hands, I can fully understand what I've done now. Six months in a new school. A year on my own in some rundown apartment in a town I know nothing about. All on my own. Three weeks. It took a day for me to want to change schools, and three weeks to make it happen. And this is my life now for the next year. I think back to my old man's ultimatum. Once the lease is done, and on either college or the service. I don't care which. Would you happen to be a non? I look up. The bench broke down. I lay on the ground, ass hurt from hitting jagged concrete and splintered wood. Thank God for jeans. Oh my goodness, uh, are you okay? Oh. Never. Uh, better. I instinctively apply my chill guy facade in the presence of strangers to hide how uneasy I am today. A hand is held over my face. In my pain-addled confusion, I shake it. No, sir! Uh, right. Right. The hand tightens around my own and pulls roughly. The force is enough for my feet to get under me, stumbling back up to stand before the pair of strangers. It also felt like enough force to pull my arm out of its socket. Sup? You're a nun, yeah? I'm glad we found you! Who are you guys? Why do you know my name? My name is Naomi, student council president, and your guide. 
It's my sincere pleasure to make your acquaintance, Anon. We're your welcoming committee. Okay, then. Is that really necessary? I have this prepared just for you. The orange one. Naomi, hands me a brochure. Volcano High and You. A new beginning to adulthood. The title alone makes me gag. The orange one? Naomi looks at me expectantly. The brochure is full of the typical trivialities. College prep, financial assistance, after school programs. None of it matters. Uh, babe, uh, I've got some things to take care of. Nasser looks back to the school entrance. I follow his eyes and see some people trying to lift a large speaker up the stairs of the school. Right, Nasser? Uh, she looks dejected. <laughs> of course. Nasser pulls her into a hug and nudges his muzzle against hers. Is that how dinos kiss? He leaves, running quickly to assist with the heavy sound equipment. I turn back to Naomi. She smiles again, though there is a plasticity to it. So Anon, why did you transfer here? The question catches me off guard. I freeze like a deer caught in headlights, scrambling to come up with any plausible answer. It's an innocent question she can't have known, could she? What did mom and pop put in the transfer request form when they shipped my ass here? Uh, I... You, uh, don't have to answer if you don't want to. I focus my attention on the brochure out of embarrassment. Lunch. Raya, I'm getting kind of hungry. What about something to eat? Uh, yada yada. Herbivore. Vegan. Tofu. Disgusting. Wait, hold on. Carnivore line. Filet mignon. What the fuck is wrong with this school? Is there a soup kitchen or something around here? Oh dear. Anon, are you in need of financial assistance? I can figure things out on my own. Don't worry too much about it. Oh, the school here has programs to help its less fortunate students. The principal here is great. Come on, I'll take you to him. The absolute last thing I want to be doing is asking for handouts. Actually, a... Naomi grabs my hand, and... Ah! Alert! Alert! DEFCON Level 1. DEFCON Level 1. Female making physical contact. Do not panic! Do not panic! Get a grip on the situation! This is Naomi. She's taking me somewhere by the hand, 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 hand. She already has a boyfriend, doesn't she? Wait! She already has a boyfriend! I am safe! Okay, okay, just stay silent and don't make a mess of things. It's 
so soft and smooth and surprisingly warm for scales. How lewd. Day one and I've already fallen to such depraved lows as hand-holding. Here we are, Anon. Principal Spears should be able to help with your money situation. What? Oh, right. Naomi knocks on the door. State your business. The new student needs financial help, Principal Spears. Lend him a five. I think he means the loan program, sir. Tell him to come in later. I'm dealing with another student. The fucking hell do you mean I have to clean up after? The orange Parasaurolophus's expression quickly changes from whatever that was to that same smile she's had up until now. Well, Anon, why don't I show you to class? Homeroom should be starting soon. Right. Homeroom. I take out my crumpled schedule from my pocket. Naomi takes the slip from me and blows my eardrums out with a squeal capable of shattering glass. This is so exciting! We share first period in English together! Come on, I'll introduce you to the class and you'll be able to make all sorts of new friends! Yay me. I follow after her to a classroom on the second floor. The seats were being filled with students. I take one near the front, knowing I'll have to introduce myself. I'll probably be doing that for all my classes. Fuck my life. The artificial ring of a bell blares from a speaker on the wall. With it, everyone waits as the teacher finally enters the room and shuts the door. Ohayo gozamima sukurasu. Today you habu and you kurasu me to tsuborukei no hai. What? Anon kun purizu kamu apuzen interudiusu yoru serfu. Naomi coughs and makes a subtle nod up. Oh. I stand up from my seat and face the class. Once again, all eyes on me and the tightness in my chest returns. I inhale deep, willing my erratic heart to slow. Hey. Again, those eyes just like three weeks ago. My name is Anon. Uh, uh, just like every day for the past four months. I don't really have any hobbies. I wanted to flee. Hide away. Anything to avoid those judging eyes. What was your old school like? My throat clenches. I think back again to it all. I, uh... There's whispers now. The hushed tone, silenced snickers, blending with the ever-present stares. My heart hammers at my chest, and I'm sure that they all can hear it. See the cold chill racing over me. His words snapped me out of my trance. Only Naomi was looking at me. The rest were preoccupied. Either talking about their winter break, or catching up on sleep. 
they've all been ignoring me the entire time. Puri suretano tsu yoshito anon kun. Hai, nao kurasu. That was nothing like my Japanese animes. Mr. Tsuki continued on, drawing what little attention there was to himself. I sat down, finally feeling the blood that had caught in my legs rush up, leaving me lightheaded. And I probably have to do this for each class today? Double fuck my life! Awkward introduction after awkward introduction to classmates that couldn't care less kept me anxious the whole morning. And there's still the rest of the day to go. Eventually lunch comes around. All the edible stuff is well outside my price range of fucking free. So I settle for the pseudo pizza. The kind that becomes a viable weapon if you leave it alone for 10 minutes. No time to waste after exiting the line, I scan the lunchroom for an open seat. I thought I had found a decent spot in the corner when disaster struck. Said disaster was a hand, grabbing my shoulder and turning me about. My plate of pizza-shaped cardboard threatened to smear across my shirt. I fought the momentum of the tray until the hand that had spun me stabilized it, and me. Wow, there. Nearly dropped your food, Anon. Yeah? Whose fault is that? Yours? I swear to all that is good and holy. Wanna sit with us? What? Wanna sit with Naomi and me, since you're new and all? He points to a table where the living pink sugar rush is waving. God damn it. I don't want to make a scene. Sure. Before I even sit down, the barrage of questions begins. So, what do you think of Volcano High? How about your class? You seem... I just nod along, starting to not pay attention. You looking forward to the rest of the day? Not really. All these introductions, you know? I get you. Hard to talk to people you don't know, right? Something like that, yeah. Hell, last period I tripped in front of everyone. Talk about a first impression. I don't think they care too much. Have you had any trouble since then? Do you have enough money for food today? Oh, you're short on food money, man. Not really, just got to sign up for some handouts. Naomi is starting to look disappointed. I'm only picking up on Nasser's interjections. If you need a bit more extra chow, there's going to be free refreshments at my seat. Uh, at Fang's concert after school today. You're what? Fang. Your brother or... Uh, sibling. What? Fang's gonna have some extra pizzas for the show. You could take some home. I, uh, don't know about concerts. Not really one for public events like that. All right, man. Just thought you could use a few opportunities to make friends. What was that? 
I'll assume that wasn't meant to be malicious. I'll consider it. Hey, don't leave me out of the conversation. How about I help you pick out some cheap food after school? I know some great vegan shops in the area. My stomach rolls at the V word. Maybe another time, sorry. So about that concert, Nasser? Dinner and a show, sign me the fuck up. So what do they play? Music. Music? Yes. What kind? The kind you listen to. Well, well what genre? And the good kind? <sighs> you don't know, do you? Nope. Well, free food is free food. I look at my pizza, noticing something is wrong. I test it with my plastic spork and watch the cheap utensil shatter to bits. I curse life for a third time today. The dreaded 10 minute mark has passed, rendering my pizza only useful as building material. Oh dear, Nasser, why don't you split your sandwich with him? But it's my sandwich! It's fine! We can split my vegan TLT! Nasir shudders and looks at his own foot-long Philly sub longingly. Mm, sure thing, babe. He tears the sandwich in two and hands me the larger half. Here, Anon. I will never forget your brave sacrifice. With that, we all dig into our meal. My classes after lunch were the same as before it. By now, I had a rehearsed introduction that only the teacher cared about. My classmates were disinterested and I would sit down to be forgotten. I hope the rest of the year is just like that. I just want to skate through it all. All that's left for today is the concert and dinner. I wait outside the auditorium entrance with Nasser, who was checking his phone for messages. Right. Fang says the show is starting in a bit. See? Nasser turns the screen to me. FWR, like Franklin W. Roosevelt? <sighs> Fucked wing retard. Fang's words, not mine. Is your uh, sibling always like this? Fangs. I wait for him to continue. Well, um. I mean, kinda. Glad I'm an only child. Nasser glares at me. Fangs still family. Ah, sorry. Just saying is all. Nasser deflates. You're good, Anon. And yeah, they're family, but Fang's just so, so... Difficult? Yes, difficult. And I don't know why. Sounds rough. It is. Like, I know, shh, they care, but Fang doesn't even want to be around me. Finally, the doors open, and I smell the cheesy, heart-clogging goodness within. 
Sweet, come on and on. A caveman of a man holds open the door for everyone. Wait. His massive hand stops me. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes? I'm guided to the side, away from the crowd that's filtering into the auditorium. So how are you feeling about our lovely school, Anon? I, uh... It's the spear-shaped pin on his lapel that reads principal, that informs me of who this giant is. Oh, oh, it's a nice... Cleaner than my old school. He guffaws and slaps his chest. You can thank your classmates for that. What? Now go enjoy the show. Yes, sir. Oh, I do need you to come by my office tomorrow for some paperwork. I nod and go back to the door where Nasser is standing, holding it open for the last of the audience to go inside. Nasser leads me and the large crowd into the shitty school theater. The foyer has tables with boxes of pizzas stacked taller than me. You can take a couple of boxes after Anon. That should help you out. Who the hell got all these anyways? I did. I take a box down from the stack. Others have already started stacking their plates. I check the logo on the box. And to get so many larges from Dynamo's pizza? That's a couple hundred bucks, though. Meh. About a month's worth of allowance. A month? That explains that disaster of a jacket. So about the actual show. I'll check on them. Be right back. Left on my own. I stack my plate up with some quality grease top delight. I lean against the wall, chewing bits of Supreme and observing the rest of the crowd. Another shit show. She's so stupid. They even bother? Bunch of losers. Everyone seems to share the same sentiment. So why the hell did they even show up for this? Nasser finally comes back and opens the doors to the main hall. The crowd moves in, though I hang back so I can talk with Nasser. What's with them, Nasser? <sighs> what do you mean? crowd. They were talking mad shit. What? Nasser grasps at the air, unsure what to think or do at the moment. I think he's angry. Whoa, whoa. Oh, I should have known. I don't... What are you talking about, man? I brought them here so Fang has an audience. Oh. Nasir's phone rings. He moves aside to answer it. Fen. The voice on the other end is loud and shrill. Yeah, I... He holds the phone away from his ear to save his eardrum. Okay, okay, I... The call ends, and Nasser sags. I've gotta leave.
Seriously? Yeah, Fang doesn't want me here. Uh, said I'll ruin the show. Harsh. Uh, look, whatever happens, you promise you won't hold it against them. <sighs> They're actually a really nice person once you get to know them. Nah, sir, why did you just murder the English language in cold blood? Within, I see the rest of the audience, huddled in groups around tiny snack tables. Even went to the trouble of switching out the seats for them. Naomi said it'd help. With a huff, Nasser turns away, begrudgingly leaving the auditorium. I enter the hall and take a seat in the back, away from the rest of the crowd. The lights dim and the curtains are drawn open. On stage is a trio of people my age. I think Fang is the drummer. He doesn't look related to Nasser. Maybe it is the main front woman. That must be Nasser's sister. Mm. Why the whole confusion over her sex? For fuck's sake. I'm just getting thrown around today. I don't know. She looks familiar. The band doesn't bother introducing themselves. Instead, the purple one begins plucking her bass. It all went tumbling down from there. What I thought was a guitar sounded horrifically wrong, far too heavy. The lead guitarist was using a fucking bass. And then the vocals kicked in. Its horrific screeching, combined with the amelodious shredding on a bass, created a cacophony equal to hundreds of cats ritualistically sacrificed. I fight the urge to cover my ears. I don't know too much about music, but even I know that you don't use two basses in one band, unless you know exactly what you're doing. Oh no. Oh God. What were they thinking? I look back to the crowd to gauge their interest. Surely I'm not alone in thinking this is an absolute travesty. <laughs> they still fucking suck! Time for another exhibition event. Making a shitty Majoring in art, the band! This is the future of music! Majoring in art, the band! <laughs> The crowd was standing, jeering and laughing with whoever said that. More words were said, but the laughter eclipsed them, and the music. Wait, what happened to the music? On stage, the trio looked panicked. The drummer was inching off stage while the purple bassist was about to break down in tears. But the front woman stood there, stood her ground. Ah! Fuck you! She tossed her bass aside, raising both hands and proudly displaying a finger on each of them. Fuck all of you! No one would want to fuck you, bitch! That struck a chord with her. I watch as she grabs her bass and takes the arm of the purple one, rushing off stage with the pink drummer. Oh 
God, I can't take this. I'm gonna grow a six-pack from laughing so much, I'm just gonna grab my pizza and leave. I turn towards the door and see Principal Spears, a fierce glare freezing me in place. Anon. Oh, fuck. Hey, thanks for watching episode one of my voiced edition of Snoot Game. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did crafting it. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. Episode two is just around the corner. See you soon.